New year, new background. Let's get it. Next. Happy fucking new year. 2020 was good. YouTube was good. Mike Powers Mob was good. Miley was good. I'm back. New background. You see it. Tell me what you think in the comments. Real talk. I got sick of messing around with the technical aspects of this channel and decided to simplify just a little bit. Hopefully it looks a little cleaner and not as distracting for you. You see, I got my Instagram posted up on here. I don't do much with Instagram, but definitely go over there. Check me out. Follow me. Start a conversation over there. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with that thing. I'm posting a post a picture, post some messages and whatnot. But we getting it in, finding different ways to connect with the audience, the people who have supported me through my last few months of this journey. What's popping? It's your boy, Mike Powers. And today, as you can see on your screen, we about to do something a little bit special. Here we go with this Griselda shit again. Shout out to my man, Sully187, who reached out. Sully, what's popping, man? What's good? Hit me up and said, yo, peep out the, the West Side Gun mixtape. And truth be told, I had this on my radar, I think a couple of weeks ago. Once it was announced that they was going to release this mixtape, I said, I'm about to do a show about it. I just never got around to it. I got caught up. I got busy. Holidays happen. But Sully... The good man that he is reminded me, you won't believe this. I was in the bathroom dropping the kids off at the pool. I said the shit and I was going through my, my comments and I, I saw Sully jump in there and I literally answered you Sully when I was in the bathroom pause, I was getting ready, but I'm always checking comments throughout the day. No matter where I am, if I get a free moment, I'm checking to see what y'all are saying to me. And I try to respond back as quick as possible. I figured it was no time like the present. So Sully, I got back to you, homie. Thank you for reminding me because he really, I had it on my phone as a note. He reminded me, I said, yeah, I got this on my phone. So. Let's get into the prequel. That's what I'm going to call it. West Side Gun, Flyest Nigga in Charge mixtape. I think this came out 06, 08. Somebody correct me in the comment section. My producer going to be pissed because I fucked the research. I'm just, <laughs> I'm really just getting into the music. And I was shocked when I heard this announcement that he was going to release a mixtape from so far back. And when I dove into this thing, Sully told me what song to really, I should listen to off the bat. Not going to tell you what that is right now. I just want to talk about this project as a whole and what's going on with Griselda. When listening to this album, what I realized is West Side Gun, first of all, is a genius. Let's not shortchange this man on his brilliance. Let's also not shortchange him on his tenacity. Listen, I listened to this project and I heard West Side and he was spitting hard flames, fire. And I have to apologize to West Side because quite a few times on this show, I have spoken about Benny the Butcher and Conway and kind of left West Side out on the sideline. I said, well, he's not really concerned about being lyrical and he ain't taking it all that serious or whatever goofy shit I said about that, having not known the backstory. This man has so much on his plate in terms of trying to run this burgeoning empire that I can see why maybe sometimes we don't get the very top level lyrical acrobatics from West Side that we might get from Benny or Conway. But first of all, Freddie Hotspot from the What Would Sheen Gun Do album. Damn, West Side go hard on that bitch. And when I started listening to this mixtape, the very first song, and I'm, a, I'm not gonna go through every single song, but I will go talk about a couple of songs, a few songs on this project specifically. And let me start with the intro, Lord of War. I got notes right here. And I might be referring to these notes. My apologies if I'm not looking directly at you during this whole show. But I do want to give you my take on some of these songs. Lord of War, the intro. This is the thing that made me say, I owe this man an apology. That boy is a spitter. That boy is a top shelf lyricist. He done studied the greats and he done put it into practice. And you hear it, especially on Lord of War. Thank God this is the number one track on this album. It's called an intro, but do give me so much more than an intro on here. Let me talk about the man's voice. Let me talk about West Side's voice real quick. It's the same voice, but it's not the same. It's the same pitch, but he's not using it the same as what you hear today. This is what I love about him giving us this peek into the process of what Griselda was and what they have become. 
the voice was there, but he hadn't put the seasoning on it. He ain't throw that lorries on it yet. And he was raw as fuck back in the day on this project raw. But what he is now is so much more flamboyant. It's so much more WWE. It's so much more Ric Flair. It's so much more season and salt on this delivery that he's showing you now. And I love to be able to watch that evolution because yes, they was doing their thing. You could hear it on this album. Benny, the same thing. Let's switch to Benny real quick before we get into the overall. Benny, I almost didn't recognize him on a bunch of songs that he was on. You ain't gonna recognize him. You gonna have to be, is that Benny? You know who else is on this album? Shane Gunn is on this album. We gonna talk about that in a minute. Benny is going hard on this album. Every time you hear him, he dropping gems, he dropping heat. The difference between Benny lyrically now and Benny lyrically on this project or back in the day, it's the same kind of thing with Westside. They was in the pocket. They was in that grimy New York bodega posted up on the block, grimy ass. New York shit and it was serviceable. I would say even on this project, they sound better than most of the shit that's popping, whether it be East Coast shit or whether it be that pop shit that these labels is trying to feed you. And so when I listened to it, my only thought was, wow, they took what was basic I and mean, it was fly as fuck in terms of lyricism and delivery, but it was sort of in the same pocket as what a lot of East Coast cats have been doing. They just was doing a little bit better. Once they expanded, let's talk about West Side specifically. West Side, when he went more flamboyant, when he started doing a little bit more sing-songy with the lyrics and stretching out the vowels, and the, that's what made him a feature attraction. That's what's making people wanna really hear West Side come on tracks now, because he about to bring something completely fly and elegant to the table. And he learned how to use that instrument that is his voice to perfection it took him a while to get there but he figured this shit out the man is a genius and benny was still detailed but he kind of started to move out when you see him move forward you see him moving out a lot of the filler there's so so many things that benny has to say i believe he's taught himself how to say more with less and you just gonna have to listen to this project to figure out what I'm talking about. And his voice now is much more authoritative than what it was on this project. Good serviceable rapper, top of his game, East Coast shit on this project, Benny dropped. But the difference between Benny then and Benny now is his confidence and his command of his own instrument. His voice now is iconic. His voice before was okay. Now it's a voice that hip hop fans is never ever gonna forget. He working really hard to put himself on the Mount Rushmore. Conway is on this project. Conway on this project goes under the name Cannon, K-A-N-N-O-N. -N -N. And he did a rendition of Stan, the Eminem joint, was that spit on my lip? Shit. The Eminem joint. And I didn't like it. The voice was pretty decent. And he came up on maybe a, a couple other tracks on this album where you hear him spit flames. But I hate that this man got shot. But it's undeniable that his voice, his delivery, much like the transition that 50 went through, is much better. It just sound much, much better. The lyrics got sharper. Uh, grimier, grittier, and at the same time, more sophisticated. Well, and how do you do that? How do you do grimy and elegant and sophisticated all in the same verse, all out of the same person? They're all geniuses. And so let's move on to talk about specific cuts on this album as to not make this thing too long. I'm not playing nothing today because I'm trying to get my videos monetized and I just, I'm sick of copyright strikes at this point. At some point, I'll, I'll probably will get back to a few reactions here and there. But right now, let's try to play this by the book a little bit. Follow me. Looking at my notes. So uh, overall observation about this project when I listen to it, I realized that they they never switched up. They never tried to follow a, a trend, some shit that was popping that was coming from down south or some trap music. They stuck to their guns on what the essence of hip hop and street East Coast hip hop is. They When you listen to this album, you're going to hear they always been on it. You got to respect that grind. That even though East Coast rap was not at the top of the charts, it wasn't selling five, six, eight million albums. They said, this is what the fuck we about and this is what we sticking with. God damn it, you hear it on this album. And so now everything that comes after that, you realize the work that it took to get there, how long they took to, to blow into that glass pause or to chisel at that rock to find that diamond. It took them a while. 
but they was always on some true shit. That's what I love about they they refined it and they perfected it. That's what I like about this album. Sully 187. Let's get right to it. I'm bumping the mic. Let's get right to it. Skit. Sully said, listen to Skit. I listened to Skit and God damn it, the music is incredible. West Side on this thing is incredible. Lyrically, he going for his. I will never in my life ever again underrate the lyrical ability or dexterity of West Side Gun. He a true spitter. All these spitters coming out of one family. Shane Gun is on this album. Shane Gun could spit. Shane Gun could spit. And let me sp skip ahead to my notes and talk about my the thing I took away from Shane Gun on this project, especially. Shane Gun got a song on this project called Death Keep Calling Me. And it's eerie. I'm be honest. Uh, to hear him say, if you don't like me, come kill me, sent chills up my spine. To hear him say that. And the name of the song is Death Keep Calling Me. And that's what this whole song is about. The fact that he predicts essentially his own early demise. He says repeatedly on this song how he knew he was going to get killed. He wanted Benny to take care of his daughter or his kids. I'm sorry if I'm getting this wrong. It's a beautiful beat. And yet he's spitting about the fact that he is imminently facing death. And when you listen to this, I think it becomes evident that Benny probably got his vivid storytelling and painting these canvases from his brother, from Shane Gun. And Shane Gun is all over this project, murdering it left and right. Incredible performances. And it makes you wish that he was still around. It also makes you understand why the fuck they named their album What Would Shane Gun Do as an homage to the man that they say was the heart of this organization. Yeah, I could see that. Okay, so let's talk about a few more cuts from this album. Skit, beautiful beat, subtle horns with a steady head nod rhythm. And I wrote in my notes, who is this rapping? Shane Gun on this? I know West Side is on it, but Shane Gun is, I think, also on this joint. It's incredible. Uh, Sully187, thank you for turning me on to that. It's going on the phone right here. I'm bumping that. Freestyle is one of the songs that I've made a note about on here. West Side go crazy on this song. He raps this, it's like a mixtape, real. it's like a real mixtape style thing going on here. He's rapping over, you don't know my name by Alicia Keys and this shit sound beautiful. You can start to feel the vibe on this album once you get to this song crazy that they released this and another thing you think oh this is a mixtape you go ahead and play these fucking songs it's just a mixtape these motherfuckers about their business he not just about to put this out here and he didn't just put this out here so motherfuckers could grab it like a free mixtape and just use it i try to use the music on this joint right now i'm gonna get copyrighted they are protecting their business much respect to them and they should protect it because it's worth it this is going 15 years from now it's going to sell out like Reasonable Doubt did when they released that way later. All the knuckleheads that didn't catch it the first time. Then they came up when it got re-released. They said, oh yeah, well, let me check that Reasonable. Let me see what he was really doing. Yeah, I was on that since the beginning. But we had them latecomers. Thank God I'm not going to be one of them on this project. But a lot of people will. By the time this album is done selling, it's probably going to sell about 3 million copies. Not this year, but over time, it's probably going to sell about 3 million copies, if not more. Other notes from the album... Gun Go is a good song. The chorus sound like a 50 Cent song uh, on Gun Go. Not necessarily something that I like, but the spitting was tremendous on it. And the song got crazy once Wes got on it. Ain't that crazy for me to say? Wes showed up and the shit got crazy. Never talk bad about that man again. <laughs> Note the self, never talk bad about that man's lyrical ability ever again. Thousand airs, sick ass beat, slick ass fucking bass line. And when West Side come through on this bitch, it's like he's sliding into the cockpit of a Porsche. Just the way he jumped inside the pocket. Pack heat, that motherfucker's fire. It's 25 songs on this joint, and I still ain't listened to all of them yet. I'm trying to study as many different artists as I can right now, and I just didn't really have time to sit and listen to the whole thing, but I'm gonna link it in the description below so you can check it out. But the dudes continue to be on fire. The project, number one, the project falls in, into a long line of other projects that West Side has been at the helm of. Now this is on Street Entertainment, which I don't know whose label that is, but you look at the artwork right here. See this artwork? What is that, like a, a Rembrandt take? It's not a Picasso, right? It's like a Rembrandt type. But when you look at the artwork for all of their shit, it's different. 
is outside the box. It's something that, that's visually appealing, something that you want to touch and take home, shit that you want to hang on your wall. And I think that Westside, I think he mentioned that he was in the fashion and art direction and things of that nature. And he's putting those skills to use on this. He's becoming a serious mogul, a serious creative force in the industry. And I love going back, listening to where they were. So it's not really too much else for me to say about this. I don't want to be sitting up here talking just to be talking, but I do want to make it clear that when you listen to this project from where they were to where they are now, it's clear that right now we looking at athletes that are in their prime. So y'all rest of y'all niggas rapping y'all East coast cast y'all New York cast be scared because they came this far from tinkering and fucking around with it until they put the exact right ingredients together and they got an army of motherfuckers that can spit, make beats, market and have a profound effect on this music industry. But real quick though, let me get to these subscriber shout outs since I didn't do that at the beginning. Anybody that subscribed to this channel, clicking videos, leaving comments, hitting the thumbs up. I really, really, really do appreciate you. Juju, that dude was popping. Welcome to the mob. Ishmael got a Masi. I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation. And Ronnie Muhammad was popping. Welcome to the mob. Thank you for subscribing. And I'm about to get out of here real quick. I just wanted to really touch on this album. I think it's very important. I think it's something that's really never been done on this level before in terms of making this big of a splash in the industry and then going back and showing people the work that it took to get where you currently are. Brilliant maneuver. I really advise you to go listen to this entire album. I will be completing my listen within this week coming up. I'm going to link it in the description below. Tell me what you think about my new background in the comment section, and please go listen to this album. If you like what I'm putting out, hit the like button, subscribe, comment, and share. And until next time, I'm Mike Powers. I'm out.